Hey guys, what is going on? My video guide for the day is showing you guys how to update your firmware on your MUMMC. Now you may notice that if you update your SysCFW or stock, that your MUNAM partition does not reflect the new firmware. Now this is because they are not sharing the same system NAND. Now, just a side note, your MUMMC should be offline at all times. You should never go online on your MU and your SIS, as this can lead to a potential ban. So you never want to go online on both your SIS CFW and your MUMMC. So please make sure that you do not do that. Now, before I show you how to dump your SIS firmware onto your MUNAND, make sure you do have a raw GPP and boot01 EMMC backup as stated in this guide that will be linked in the description. Now, I will make sure to link this update guide in the description of the video. Now, this is the page that we will primarily be using to follow the steps on properly updating your MUNAND. Now, you will need to make sure that you have the latest release of Atmosphere and Hecate updated on your Switch along with the latest firmware update. Now you can follow the guide above um, these steps in order to learn how to properly update both. Now we'll put out a new video outlining these steps as well. Now once you have already finished updating your system firmware and have the latest AMS and Hakati installed, you will want to make sure that you download a copy of tegraexplorer.bin. Now most of you might be familiar with this as you may have used this to format your SD card to FAT32 uh, back in the beginning of modding your switch. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you put your switch into RCM mode and then continue to injecting Tegra Explorer.bin. Now, to make sure that you're injecting the proper file, make sure you click on this folder icon and you navigate over to that Tegra Explorer.bin and you click on open and it should populate here under the payloads. And then you're going to go ahead and click on inject payload and then we'll switch over to my switch. So after you inject Tegra Explorer.bin onto your switch, you should be able to see this screen pop up. Now you will see an option that says dump firmware. Um, just make sure you navigate over to it and click on it. Now if you go down, you'll see that dump firmware is right there. Now once you see that, you want to make sure you go ahead and click the A button. And just give the tool a couple of minutes to dump the uh, firmware. Um, just be a little bit patient on this. Now you can see that when it's done, you can see how much time was taken. Mine says 96 seconds and you can press any key to exit. Um, I just press the A button and I'm back to the main screen. Now what you can do from here is you can go ahead and click on reboot to atmosphere uh, slash reboot payload.bin, which is the very um, last option. So you can go ahead and navigate over to that and click on the A button and then you'll see that you're launched back into the Hecate screen. Now, I'm not sure how most of you guys launch your MUNAND. Now, most of you may just go to the launch button and click on your MUMMC, which is fine. Just make sure that you don't have your MUNAND connected to the internet, or just make sure that you have 90DNS enabled when booting into it. Now, for me, I usually go back and go to the payloads and I launch via fuseprimary.bin. Now, once you're in, you can always head over to the system settings to make sure you're in MU. So I can head over to system settings, go all the way down to system, and then you should be able to read the current version. Now it does say 11.0.1 .1 AMS 19.3 uh, with the uh, E symbol at the end. Now the E symbol at the end means that you are in fact in MUNAND. Now once you confirm that you are on your MUMMC, you can go ahead and title launch the homebrew menu. Now title launching means that you're holding R while booting into any game. Remember the R button is on the top right of your switch. So let's go ahead, hold R and then click on A. And for me, I will just be clicking start software. So once you do that, you'll see that your homebrew menu pops up. Now the next thing you wanna do is you wanna navigate over to Daybreak, which you should have installed. Now, if you don't have Daybreak installed, I will make sure to link it in the description of this video. 
Now just make sure you put the NRO file into your switch folder so it will show up here in this homebrew menu. Now you want to go ahead and click on Daybreak. Once you do, this uh, screen will pop up and you want to make sure you click on Install. Now it's going to tell you select an update directory. Now what you want to do is you want to make sure you head over to Tegra Explorer which is on the bottom here. And once you get there, you're going to click on A. And then you're going to see something that says firmware. You're going to go ahead and click on A for that. And then you're going to see the latest firmware number right here. Go ahead and click on A. Now you will see the update information. Um, you'll see the directory, the firmware number, the version. It tells you if XBAT is supported. Um, and then it says validating update. This may take a moment and the update is valid. And then you'll see an option to go back or to click continue. Go ahead and click on continue. Now it says select settings mode. Now one of the options says reset to factory settings. The other one says preserve settings. You want to make sure that you click on preserve settings. Now you should see a screen that says select driver variant. If you do happen to see a warning message that says XFAT firmware is missing or corrupt, this means that you don't have XFAT drivers installed on your Sys MMC. Just press continue if that's the case. Now if you're here, you should install FAT32 plus XFAT. So the second option. If not, you can always just click on the install FAT32 and continue. But since I'm here, I will be making sure to click on the FAT32 plus XFAT. And then it's going to say, are you sure you want to proceed? Go ahead and click on continue. And then you're just going to wait for it to install the update. So wait for Daybreak to complete installing the dump firmware. Once it's done, it will ask you to reboot. So let's go ahead and wait for that. Now you can see that the update was applied successfully. You can go ahead and click on the reboot. And your switch should reboot now back into the launch screen. Now what you can do from here is you can head back into your Emunant, uh, whichever way you boot into. If you boot in via launch, you can do it that way as well or via fuse primary. Now if everything worked well, you can go ahead and Go back into your system settings. You can scroll all the way down to system and then you can see the, you can actually see that the current version is now on 12.0.2 and you're still on your Emunand. So this is how you update your Emunand firmware successfully using Daybreak. Now I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe and like the video if you like my content. Um, I will be coming out with some new videos soon. Thank you guys and I'll catch you guys on the next one.